You know, living tomorrow is what we're all going to be doing. And this series is designed to give you a glimpse of what to expect. Now, it's not pie in the sky, distant future stuff either. It's all in development right now. And you can expect to see it in your world very soon. So what's the latest on flying in the future? Well, on the more exotic end of the spectrum, you can expect to see the introduction of commercial space flight for paying passengers. For a mere $100,000, you'll be able to book passage on aircraft that'll take you to suborbital altitudes, about 60 miles above the Earth, high enough to experience zero gravity conditions for several minutes. Closer to the Earth's surface, passenger aircraft are entering a new generation of innovation. Airbus's A380 is scheduled to begin flying commercial flights in late 2007. This revolutionary double-decker airplane can carry up to 850 passengers. Some airlines have opted to use the extra room to provide some rather novel services bars, casinos, double beds, a gymnasium, and showers. There are also a number of plans in the works to streamline the process of booking flights and checking in, all with the intention of getting you, the passenger, through the terminal and into your plane as quickly as possible. Also, look for a host of new, personalized services for the air traveler of tomorrow. All right, I want to go to Congo. No reason to say why, I just want to do it. Now I booked myself a flight online just like you can now, and I set my preferred meal, reading material, what kind of car I want to rent. All this is stored on my privilege pass, which airlines issue to their group of flyers. Of course, tomorrow this pass will exist as a virtual document on my PDA. Now the day of my flight has arrived, and I'm going to check in on the web like I've always done. I got my boarding pass stored on my cell phone. This is my ticket. Of course, by now, the phones are smart, so it's going to be doing a lot for me on this trip. So I'm at the airport. My cell phone is still working hard for me. It's already established contact with the airport computer, and it's telling me that I have 35 minutes to get to gate 101. Like I said, my cell phone is my boarding pass, so when I get to the gate, I just scan it. A fingerprint confirms my identity on my way. And now, with a minimum of hassle, I'm in my seat. All I have to do is scan my privilege pass, and my preferences come up on the screen here. And then I can start reading my favorite newspaper digitally. Since I'm going to be in Congo for a while, I don't want to leave a lot of food in the house. But thanks to this online shopping service, I'll make sure there's fresh food when I get back. I'll just tell them what I want, and those groceries will be there for me on the day I return. So there you have it. Getting from point A to point B is going to be a lot less aggravating. Now I can't promise that the airports in the future are going to be any less hectic, but it is going to be a lot easier to get through them. I'm Vince Jolivet, and I'll see you tomorrow.